Some birds are named after famous naturalists or ornithologists. Some are named after the way their calls sound, like Chuck Will's Widow, Poor Will, or Kill Deer. Others just have regular, straightforward names that describe their appearance, like Red Winged Blackbird. But some bird names are just odd. And then there's that handful that sound like crude insults that are sure to make your non-birding friends laugh, <laughs> or at least give you huh? a wide-eyed stare. Language changes over time, and sometimes words that meant one thing hundreds of years ago mean something very different today. Let's take a look at the etymology of 10 different bird names. First are the nocturnal birds known as nightjars. The night part makes sense, but what about the jar suffix? The European nightjar was the first in this group to be named back in the 17th century. It is so named for being active at night and for their trilling calls, described back then as a jarring noise. There's more. Night jars are also known as goat suckers. They belong to the family Caprimulgidae, which loosely translates from Latin to goat milker. This folklore goes all the way back to Aristotle. It was believed that these birds would drink the milk of goats during the night. But nothing could be further from the truth, as night jars are insectivores. Woodcocks are found in North America, Europe, Asia, Indonesia, and parts of Japan. They are in the genus Scolopax, which is Latin for woodcock. The ancient Greek word ascolopas means woodcock. Even in Old English, it's the same thing, but spelled differently. Okay, great, but why? They inhabit the woods and look small and kind of chickeny, is it that? The truth is, no one is really sure. I found one person's blog article that offers two very convincing hypotheses. Quote, the first, scoli plus apos, which could mean skew-eyed, or with a bit of stretching, looking askance. The other is scallops, a word used for moles, which breaks down to dig face. End quote. Both of these make a lot of sense when considering the eye position of woodcocks and the fact that they spend their time with their bills in the mud and face close to the earth. Grackles are blackbirds in the family Icteridae and inhabit North and South America. The word grackle in Latin is graculus, which means jackdaw. But jackdaws are a type of crow found in Europe and Asia, and they're corvids not icterids. Maybe the resemblance of glossy black plumage and the strong bill played a role in this association. So here's how it goes. We start with the Latin graculus, then the variation of gracula followed. And then in 1772, the anglicized version of gracule was created as an adaptation of the Latin. I'm not sure when the slight change in spelling and pronunciation occurred from Gracul to Grackle. The tufted titmouse is a small gray bird with a cute crest in the family Paradi. The word tit comes from Old English, meaning to express something small, and mace, meaning mouse. Think of when we say tidbit or titbit to refer to just a little bit of something. We can apply this to other birds with similar names. Bush tits are small birds that inhabit shrubs and dense, brushy habitat. The great tit of Europe is so named because it is one of the largest in its family of small birds. The Eurasian blue tit is the Eurasian blue small bird. And then the very amusing name, fluffy-backed tit babbler from Malaysia and Indonesia. It was thought that it looked like a cross between both a tit and the group of birds known as babblers. Bobolinks are in the icterid family and are found in North and South America. Their scientific name is Dolichonyx orizivorus. Orisa in the second part means rice, 
so erisivorous means rice-eating. They were originally called rice birds due to their appetite for rice and other grains, especially during migration and winter. But that changed when in the 19th century, a poet named William Cullen Bryant wrote a poem about the birds titled Sir Robert of Lincoln. Some of the refrains are, Robert of Lincoln is telling his name, Bob O'Link, Bob O'Link, and hear him call his name in merry note, Bob O'Link, Bob O'Link. So it went from Rice Bird to Robert of Lincoln to Bob of Lincoln to Bob O'Link, spelled L-I-N-C, to its current spelling, which is where we are today. Next on the list are the family of seabirds known as boobies, like the blue-footed booby. Booby comes from the 1590s and is a Spanish word meaning fool, clumsy, or clown. This was given to the birds for their lack of regard for danger and for their clumsiness, making them easily caught. It's kind of like how we use the phrase booby trap, something designed to fool or dupe someone. Bufflehead are the smallest diving duck in North America. Their name is a contraction between buffalo and head, as their heads are puffy and look bigger than they actually are. Their scientific name is Bucephala albiola, with Bucephala meaning bullheaded or large-headed. Limpkins are tropical wetland birds found in coastal southeastern U.S., as well as Central and South America. Early settlers described the birds as having a limp when they were pursued by hunters and their dogs. Otherwise, they do have a high-stepping, kind of awkward gait that may appear as a limp when they forage in shallow water. And lastly is the little bustard found in southwestern Europe and parts of Asia. Their scientific name is Tetrax tetrax, which comes from ancient Greek meaning hazel grouse, which is quite fitting for their long-legged terrestrial lifestyle. But what is a bustard? That comes from the word avis in Latin meaning bird, and a lost Spanish word, tarda. That means tread, or we could extrapolate and say walking. So. This is the little walking bird. Have you enjoyed this dive into avian nomenclature? It's a fascinating subject. What other birds do you think should be on this list? Let me know in the comments, and maybe I'll make a part two to this video. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.